started this project um, about 18 months ago, two years ago, and a, a lot of this was based on um, our extensive use of the heart bar shoes in the support horses to help maintain soundness. And, and I thought we really needed um, uh, to sort of quantify and sort of get a little better handle on what, you know, what just was it, uh, making these things work. And, and it wasn't good enough to just have a successful shoe, but try to understand a little bit of the mechanics behind it. <clears throat> and, and the interesting thing of it is through this whole project, it's really sort of changed how I view the hoof. I don't view the hoof now as quite such a, a rigid structure. And I think how the heart bar shoe actually affects the horse is quite different than when we started the project. But essentially, um, we ran a pilot study to get uh, <clears throat> with one of these companies to choose and pick the right type of instrument. So we wanted something that was non-destructive, that was fast, uh, reasonable cost. We wanted to incorporate this in our in our practice and our, our daily um, shoeing routine. So we didn't, you know, we, we still have to get out there and work for a living. So we wanted a, um, something we can incorporate in with our daily work. And then uh, over the period of time, you know, the several cycles of shoeing, we could compile a little bit of data. <clears throat> so we used a Settle with a Fleur product, their T400 camera, and we chose to, as we, why we did this is when in, in applying the heart bar shoe, we were often getting responses from clients about how we were changing the temperature of the feet or the feet were drying out quicker. So I thought we may be impacting the circulation or the circulatory pattern of the foot you know, the blood perfusion and through the coronary band. So <clears throat> this was the easiest way to determine if something like that was going on. So the sites we chose to record the temperature were the outside quarter and coronary band of both the left and right front feet. And then we went ahead and we did a series of pictures where these horses were sort of fit into the protocol. They couldn't be in work. We wanted these, or should I say, they should be at stall rest. They couldn't have had exercise prior to doing this. We'd bring them out. They were all viewed on a flat black mat or, you know, a dirty, non-reflective concrete surface. Pictures were taken of, you know, opposing um, anatomical sites, both the outside coronary band of each front foot before we shod the horse, <clears throat> when the shoe was removed, when the feet was trimmed, and then one or two times in between, and then when we got the shoes, the heart bars back on. We would take the temperature again, and and we the the bottom line, sort of in a nutshell, the results that we were kind of seeing were um, a classical peak right in the beginning. Once these shoes were pulled, as as long as the foot was held up off the ground for more than a minute or two. Now, uh, and the interesting thing with that is that sort of corresponded with the controls, which were our barefoot horses um, and horses that had open shoes. And basically, some of that really goes it really is supported by some of the more current theories on. Um, circulation in the foot. Um, when the foot is off the ground, we get a little bit of blood flow. When the foot is on the ground, it's sort of <clears throat> compressed out of it. And and that's giving you, that's sort of the Reader's Digest version. But my I guess my thought of this as a farrier for 37 years was that the horse needed to be working at a trot. He needed to be moving, you know, for this process of circulation to be extensive as it was. I thought we needed more activity. So I was quite surprised to see something as simple as just picking up a foot on a standing horse, holding it up there for a minute or two, even if you did it with your finger, that you would that quickly change the circulatory pattern. Um, our choice of landmarks was simply because it was the fastest place to measure a change in temperature. The, the barefoot horses that we, we sampled, we didn't really, we got an initial peak from holding these feet up and then as we went through the, the trimming and we tried to, of course it's a lot quicker to trim a barefoot horse than one with shoes, you know, place a set of heart bar shoes on, but bottom line is um, we did get <clears throat> quite a bit of change in circulatory pattern, we did get an increase in temperature, but my overall view of the feet, just looking at this infrared project to this date is that the foot is a much more of a, a fluid uh, structure then we're not looking at such a rigid thing and I, and I sometimes now uh, my previous thoughts is using the heart bar to maybe being more supportive and to help some of the rigid the bars and the heels and that sort of things now I'm looking at some of the impact of soundness is due more to how we're managing the fluid dynamics of the foot actually I mean the, the bone is quite porous um, and I think really it's more equivalent to a water balloon or something along that nature. So that's, that, that's where we are. We still have a little bit more work to do on it, but that's sort of the bottom line of that project. Okay.